Okay. Hi, everybody. A very good evening. Uh, just let me down, down, download the stuff. By the meanwhile, let them. Internet is pretty slow today. I don't know why. One drive is not opening. It should be done. Okay, this is better. Okay, guys, now we are ready. Just give me one second. Let me share my screen. Right. I hope everybody is able to see the screen. Right. Okay. So we have coordination compounds this time. Right. First one, the diamagnetic species among these is what they're asking. Oh, what is wrong? Why is it not coming? Okay. 
Okay, now I think it's now fine. So you have to find what are the diamagnetic species here. Diamagnetic species are not going to have any unpaired electron. All electrons are paired, right? So now here I understand that nickel is in plus two oxygen state. Nickel is 3D8, 4S2, right? Now, if it is going to be Ni2 plus, these two electrons are gone and we have 3D6. And 3D6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Now, you see that this is a weak field again. Weak field again, pairing won't happen, right? So they still have unpaired electrons. This cannot be the answer. Next. NiCN42 minus, again, if you calculate the oxygen state, it is going to be plus 2. Now, in this case, since I have a Cn minus, which is going to be a strong field again, now what is going to happen? This will convert to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is going to have two electrons here. Now, there are no unpaired electrons, right? So, definitely, this is going to be the diamagnetic species. Strong field ligand pairing will happen. Weak field ligand pairing won't happen. Very simple. Moving on. Next. When CaSO4 reacts with KCN, the complex form this. That's a very easy question. It's K3Cu, K3Cu, Cn four times. That's the answer. K, K should be in the uh, counter ion, right? And Cu should be inside, Cn should be inside, right? And why not other things? Obviously, this cannot be formed, right? And the coordination number three for copper is never possible. Coordination number four for copper is okay, right? Here it is coordination number four. Here it is coordination number four for copper. But here you see that let us carry the oxygen instead. If I write the Cu, Cn four times, now what will have been the charge? Now I know K as K is having a plus. So it will have been 2K plus. So now it will have been 2 minus. Now check for the oxygen state of copper. Copper oxygen state will be X minus 4 equal to minus 2. So X will be equal to plus 2. Okay, here what is happening? Here we have Cu, Cn four times, 3 minus. Right. So here copper will be in plus one oxygen state, which is more stable, plus one or plus two. Definitely plus one is more stable. Now, because if you see plus one, we have copper to have 3D10 for S1. This is how we write the configuration, right? And if I remove this one electron, I have a fully filled configuration, 3D10. But if I remove three electrons, this becomes 3D9. That is unstable. 3D10 is more stable, right? So definitely option A will be the answer for this question. Right? Okay. Next. 100 ml of hard water is dated, dated, again, dated against uh, 0 0.1 mcdg, the hardness. This is not part of the syllabus, guys. Don't worry about this. Next. Uh, PET, NH3, NH2OH, NO2, pyridyl will form how many geometrical isomers? Now, we know when I have M, A, B, C, D, right, of this type, right, it is going to have uh, how much? Uh, five, right? Five geometric isomers are possible. Maximum number here. That's going to be the answer. You have to remember these values, guys. Right? You have to go through your these things and everything under number. Five is the answer. Okay. Right. Next. Uh, again, same question. Next. This is the following statement is correct. NiH2O6 times and nin 6 m have same value of CFSC. Now, CFSC, we know how to calculate it. Right? CFSC is equal to um, minus 0.6, no, minus 0.4 into number of electrons in T2G, T2G plus 0.6 into number of electrons in EG. That is what we do. I think it's going to be opposite. It is minus 0.6 and 0.4. 0.4 into 2. No, that's correct only. Okay, whatever we wrote as absolutely fine. So it is going to be minus 0 0.4 into number of electrons in T2G plus 0.4. This is minus 0.6 plus 0.4 into number of electrons in EG. Right. So now let us calculate H2O is a weak field ligand. Now again, it would have been 3D, 3D8. Again, Na is going to be in plus two oxygen state in both of them. Now I know 3D6, how it is going, 3D8, how it is going to look. Right. 3D8. Now, in case of ammonia, all of them will get paired. Right. And in case of your H2O, none of them are going to be paired. Everything is going to be unpaired. So basically, we need to go for 3D8 configuration and I have to fill eight electrons. So for NH3, we can say that it would have been T2G. No, it's 3D6 for us two. So I have only 3D6. Okay. Right. So 3D6 for us. Now I have six electrons. All the six electrons can go to e, uh, T2G and EG is zero. That happens in case of what? That is not this. That it happens in case of your, ah, correct. That happens in case of your NH3 because NH3 is a strong field again. Pairing will happen. Pairing will happen here. Right. And for this one, we'll write. Now pairing won't happen. Now I have to account for six electrons. So now you can write. T2, now you understand, right? How two T2G looks. It looks like this. T2G is going to have three orbitals. 
and each is going to have uh, this thing over my account. So now I will not go for pairing. So this is how I'll fill, right? And the sixth electron goes here. So definitely the number of electrons in EG becomes two in the case of your NIC, NIH2O six times, whereas there are no electrons in EG. So definitely this formula, if you apply the CFOC value will be different. So that is wrong, right? NIH2O six times and NIH are same value of magnetic moment. No, that is also wrong because you answer, there are magnetic moment, you know, what is the formula? Root of N into N plus two. That N talks about the number of unpaired electrons. Here I have four unpaired electrons. Here I have zero unpaired electrons, right? So which of the following statement is correct? None of these are correct. A is the answer, right? Okay, next. Select the pair of hydrate isomers in which both hydrate isomers have two stereoisomeric stereo -isomeric forms. Okay, now we have, uh, okay, this is inside, say H2O is inside, and here you see that it is coming as H2O outside as water location. So yes, this is a hydrate isomer, okay. Again, H2O here, H2O outside, okay. And here, nothing is there, no H2Os, and here both are H2O outside. So either A or B can only be the answer, right? Now they need to have stereogenic forms. Now you see, this is of the form M A4, dc and this one is of the form m a 5 b right is it correct now ah, there should be a bracket yes m a 4 by m a 5 b now this kind of iso this cannot show any stereoisomerism neither geometrical isomerism nor your optical isomerism it can show but m a 4 bc can show geometrical right so definitely the answer would be what a right sir so, uh why can't it be d and that's what M A five B. That is the form, right? M N H three five times and H two, right? This cannot show. Option D. Option D. Option D. Both are H two or two outside. One should be inside for hydrometal should be shown. For isomer for hydrate isomer to be shown. One is inside, right? Where is inside? Oh, okay, here. Okay, okay, let me clear this off. Okay, so now what? Two five H two O's. This H two O's. Oh, okay, okay. And have two stereoisomeric forms. That means both the things so have an arm. Now you see that this is of the form M A five B. Uh, yeah, this will show hydrate isomerism. That's that's that will actually be right. But this is of the form M A five B. This is of the form M O M A four uh, M A four B two. This will show geometrical, right? But this will not show. Whereas this will show as well as this will show. Are you able to get the point? Yes, sir. Right, so this the fa the first one will not show any geometric isomers, even though they are hydrate isomers. But this thing is that they need to have two stereoisomeric forms. I mean, they have to show stereoisomerism. Definitely, this one will show as well as this one will show because this is of the form M A four B two. Again, you will have cis or trans here. Definitely, so A is the answer. Okay, All right. Next coordination number of thorium in K four. I have to find the coordination number. I know this is a didentate ligand. This is a monodentate ligand. Right, so I have four. Uh, it cannot be more than six, but thorium, thorium can have eight, ten. Yeah, thorium can have ten, but ten not possible. First of all, hmm. okay, fine. So they have here. I have four. Four into two becomes eight. Right, and I have two monodentate ligands. Two into one will become two. So these two, if you add, I'm going to get ten. Ten will be the answer. Right, C two O four two minus is C two O four two minus is not minus C two O four two minus it is oxalate. Sir, hmm. Sir, here uh, K four is there, right? So it should hmm. be like power plus four, right? For the anionic minus four. That minus coordination four, yeah. complex will have minus four. Yes, yes sir, minus four. We need to equate it, right? What do you mean equate it? Like uh, four into minus two, uh, four into two hmm. plus uh, two into what is this? Zero. OH2, what is this? Zero, right? Hey, OH2 is nothing but H2O, zero. Ah, yeah, okay, zero. That is for oxidation state. Why are you even going for oxidation state? They're asking for coordination number, right? Coordination okay. number is what? Coordination number is the number of monodentate ligands attached. But in this case, I have a didentate ligand. So I'm multiplying it by two. That means I'm considering a didentate ligand as two monodentate ligand. That's what yes. I'm bringing. Right? Got it. Okay. Next. Which of the so, following? Yeah. So can you go to the fourth question? For a second. Mm -hmm. Fourth question. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh. So actually, oh, for oh, this, we didn't, uh, we didn't do this. Okay, answer this five. Ah, uh, okay. Ah. Uh. So actually, it should be uh three, right? Number of geometrical sure. isomers. What is given in your textbook? M A B C D. Actually, the possible isomers are two cis and one trans, right? So it should be three. A B C D. No, I can have A. Say for example, A cis with this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You have three possibilities. Yes, absolutely. Right. So I can show you guys. For example, you can have you have only this thing, right? If it is M A B C D E, then it becomes five. Correct. In coordination number six. Right. Now here in the structure, you see that A and D are cis. Right and A and C are trans. This is one structure you can write, and another structure you can write A and D are trans and B and C are trans, or you can go for what, or you can go for A and B as trans. And so I have doubts, sir. Yeah. Here NO two is ambidextrous ligand, sir. So it can go by isomers, sir. No, they are asking only about geometric isomers. They are not asking anything about structural isomers. That comes under structural isomerism. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Right. So only three possibilities. Either A can be trans with C, I mean trans with C or with D or with B. Only three. Yes. Sir, so here we are fixing the position of A and then yeah, and then rotating other thing. Yes, absolutely. That is that is how you should do it also, so that you will not be able to get redundancies. That is multiple times you will not get the same compound. So that sir, A can be cis with B also. Ah, no, it is cis with B. Here it is cis with B. These okay. are the possibilities now. Okay. Right. You fix one and change right change other things. That's it. Right. Okay. Next. Right. Which of the following will not give test of all the ions present in it? That means if I go for this K two Fe two SO four thrice and twenty four H two O, this is of the form what? This is this will definitely not give. Right. It is going to give me K K plus and Fe C N six three minus. Right. And which will not give test of all the ions? Obviously, it's going to be only C. Rest of all are okay. Rest of all are normal double salts. Double salts will give me all the ions, right? Your coordination complex, your coordination complex. I mean, the coordination sphere will not dissociate. That's what you have to understand, right? Next, the coordination number of a central metal atom in a complex is determined by number of. Yeah, what happened? Sir, uh, can you show the before picture? Hmm. Done. Sir, can you explain this? Ah, so basically, when I'm going to dissolve it in water for first one, I will get K plus, I will get Fe two plus, I will get SO four two minus. Same goes with this. I will get NH four plus, I will get Fe two plus, I will get SO four two minus. Right. But here, if you go, what am I going to get? K plus and Fe CN six times three minus. That means we expect Fe to come out. But that is not coming out because it is inside the coordination sphere. That's why all the ions is what they are telling. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Right. So C will be the answer. Okay. Next, coordination number of a metal is in complex determined by okay number of ligands attached. No, that we cannot say. Right. Number of ligands can be more than or greater than. Number of ligands on a central atom bonded by sigma and pi bonds. No. Right. Number of only anionic ligands, no. Number of ionic metal bonded with sigma bonds, yes. That is the correct answer. How many ever sigma bonds? Even if it is going to be a didentate ligand, say I have some AA kind of ligand is there, some metal, it is going to form one sigma bond. It is going to have a sigma bond, is it not? So these two are actually going to as assume it assume that single more identate ligands forming coordinate bonds, right? So this would be the correct answer for this question. We said coordination number thing, but the Number of monodentate ligands, and each monodentate ligand will have only so one sigma bond. I cannot have more than one sigma bond between one ligand and one metal, right? So that's the answer. Next, when potassium hexa chloride platinum is dissolved in water, hexa chloride platinum. So potassium is outside, uh, platinum is there, and Cl four hexa chloro PtL six. Whatever I have the compound, right? Obviously. It is going to contain six moles, six ions per molecule. Obviously, it is going to be K four. Okay, I think it's K five. Anyways, next does not contain Cl minus. Yes, that's absolutely true. Is it not right? Because it, this one is not going to give me Cl minus because Cl minus is inside the coordination sphere, right? 
right? It reacts with AgNO3 to give AgCl. No, absolutely. Only if Cl minus can come out, it will be able to react with, react with AgNO3 from AgCl. Again, this is not wrong. This is not correct. Contains K plus Pt4 minus and Cl minus again wrong. So, answer is B. Sir, uh, what will be the subscript for K2? Right? Oh, this one you can easily find. Now, what should have been the case? Now, you see that this two. thing is going to be in plus 4 oxidation state. And this is in, this thing is going to be minus two of minus six I mean total minus six for chlorine so it will become two minus two right so there is definitely be two k plus ion so that two minus is getting cancelled right so it should be k two p p two c l six okay okay next in a g c n twice the number of pi bonds what I have is very simple so a g now we have c n like this and another c n like this. Okay, now you understand that these are sigma bonds. I understand, but if you check for CN, this is having two pi bonds and another CN having two more pi bonds. So obviously the answer would be four. That's it, very simple, right? Here the bonds are going to be for, I mean, give me a second. Right. The bonds between your ligand and metal are sigma bonds only. But in the ligand, I have a triple. I have a pi bond. Right. That is why I have to compare. Okay. Next. Give the order of chelating effect of the following ligands. Now that's very simple, right? Uh, chelation. More and more is the this thing. More and more. I mean, more and more is the denticity. More and more chelating effect it will have. Very simple, right? So EDTA should come first, right? And EDTA coming first, there's only one option. Yeah, that's the answer to this question. EDTA is of excellent dead ligand. That is going to form easily chelation. What is chelating effect? Ring formation. It is the ring formation. Right? Okay, next. Which of the following will exhibit more than 10 isomers? Now, you see, I have M, A, B, C, D, E. Definitely it will give here. M, A2, B, C, D, E, right? That is all, that also will give here also M, A, B, C, D, M, A, B, C, D, E. Again, all of them are having all different things. Definitely all of these will give. Right. Right. Uh, how are we finding this? No, you have to remember, if you try to draw the structures of these, it will become very difficult. You have to understand that for a particular form, for a particular life, say for example, M, A2, B2, C2, how many isomers? You have to know. If not, you'll not be able to answer these kind of questions. So for this, how many isomers? M, A, 2, B, 2, C, 2. If you check, uh, it will show fa facial and mirror DNA. No, that is M, A, 3, B, 2. M, A, 2, B, 2, C, 2 will have now A, all cis and then A and B, A and B, uh, trans. Mm, I think you'll get six for this. Check your textbook. They are given the structures also. Okay, I don't have to remember because I'm not going to write the examination, but still I'll be able to answer the questions if the questions are asked, right? But you should be knowing, right? How, what, what number of isomers for what different forms. Writing the structures and taking it out and writing individual structures are very, very difficult. You lose a lot of time in that. So it is better to make some table or you refer some book and get to know what are the possibilities. That's the best way. Okay. okay. Right. Next. Which of the following is found in excess of casein is added to the copper sulfate solution? We know what is the answer. See, next. The correct IPAC name of MN3. Okay, fine. Uh, MN3CO12. Now you understand that MN is going to be in zero oxidation state, right? So it should be manganese zero. Is it not? It cannot be manganate. Manganate will happen for what? Manganate will happen for negative charge, right? It should be just manganese zero. And obviously you see the 12 carbon atom means you use in organic chemistry also dodec. If it is 11 means you use monodec, right? Decane is 10, 11 is monodec and dodec is 12, right? So obviously the answer would be B. Next. Uh, complexes of M, A, M, X, 6 and M, X, 5, L, exhibit I mean, of type do not show geometrical isomerism. Obviously we know that, right? Uh, geometric isomer is not shown, shown by complexes of coordination number six. That is absolute bull crap, right? They definitely do geometric isomerism because coordination, but different, different forms will not show, right? So this is true, but R is false. D is the answer. Next. What is the IUPAC name of this? Is very simple. 
Now you understand that x uh, minus one equal to plus two. How am I writing this? Remove this two CLs, right? You will put two minus, right? Sorry, two plus. That is what I'm equating it to. And this this thing is going to be neutral, and CL minus is going to be the minus one. So x is going to be plus three oxidation state for cobalt. Okay. Now once that is done, then we can start writing the name. Uh, now again, this is your cation. This is your anion, right? So we'll name the cation first. And in the cation or anion, doesn't matter. Uh, we have to name the ligands first. Okay, so we have penta amine, right? Chloride, cobalt, three chloride. That's the answer. Okay, penta amine, chloride, one chloride only, one chloride, cobalt, three chloride because oxygen state is plus. Moving on, a coordination compound has a formula C for CH and is not liberated with ammonia but forms a precipitate with AgNO3. But forms up what? It forms a precipitate with AgNO3. Write the structure and IPAC name of the compound. They're telling that AgCl is getting formed. That is what the Ag reacts with AgNO3. This is like from from Werner's theory. This is right. So I need to have all the four ligands of ammonia attached to this. Right, and two of the CLs inside so that the coordination number becomes six, and one CL is outside that will be able to get me AgCl. Right, and obviously, I, this is the structure, and the name of the compound is very simple. Right, I should be uh, what this is cobalt will be, and again, plus three of hundred to calculate. Right, so it's going to be what how many uh, if it is four tetra tetra mine dichloride. And now we have cobalt, three chloride. Okay. Right. Next. Out of the following two coordination entities, which is chiral, optically active. Now remember, guys, your trans will never be optically active. All this is only optically active because trans will have a plane of symmetry. Okay. Cis will not have any plane of symmetry, and that is what you have to understand. Trans will never show. Hmm. Okay. I have geometric isomers, cis and trans. The trans will not show, but cis will show because trans is going to have a plane of symmetry. Sir, okay. Sir, can you show the previous question? Sir, here uh, they didn't tell like how many AgCl is precipitating, right? Yeah, that doesn't matter. No, they are done. They are telling uh, so they are telling the three I mean three chlorines and four NH3s are there. Now we have to understand, we have to make coordination number six. That is for sure. Right. So four will come here. And if at all you want to have coordination number six out of the three chlorines, two should be inside. Then only the coordination number becomes six. And one CL should obviously be outside, and that is capable of producing HCL. Okay. Right. Okay. Next. Uh fine. Well, write the write all the geometric isomers of this much and how many of them will exhibit optical isomerism. All of them will exhibit optical isomerism. Doesn't matter. Right, and we already showed you M A B C D A uh, A trans with B A trans with C A trans with D. All of them will show job optical isomerism. No problem, no problem in that. Okay, right. Next, <clears throat> uh, state the reason for you the following: <clears throat> CO <clears throat> is a stronger re complexing reagent than ammonia because of what? Because it can form sigma as well as pi. It is a sigma donor. As well as a pi acceptor. Now we know metal carbon is the back bonding, synergic bonding will happen, right? So you can form a normal covalent ring, the coordinate bond from carbon to metal, and also you'll be able to make this back bond, or it is also called as a synergic bond. And this is the only carbon monoxide and CN will be able to do this, right? That is the reason why CO is a stronger complex agent than ammonia. I have to tell, say, NH3 is only a sigma donor, whereas your CO is a sigma donor as well as a pi acceptor. That's why you're missing. Right. Next, the molecular shape of NiCO4 is not the same as NiCN4, NiCN4 times. Now, that's very simple. You have to look for this, right? Now, you see NiC, Ni, this is in zero oxidation state. So, we are going to have 3D64S2, but we'll remove this S and put it here, 3D8. Okay. Now, when I put it as 3D8, uh, now what is going to happen? You will see that. I'm going to have now pairing will happen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And we have your S and P also. Now this is going to form DSPP. 
Okay, this is going to form DSP two. Now, what about NiCN four? Now that is going to be NiN plus two oxidation state. Now it is going to be only three D six. So three D six. If I go for pairing, oh, still here it is. It is going to have. Uh, I think right. Still, it is going to be DSP two only. NiN zero oxidation state. So scantium titanium vanadium cobalt. Hmm. Scantium so, titanium vanadium. Chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel. Three D eight is correct, right? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, it is three D eight. Four S two is what I should have. Now, if I remove these electrons, what is going to happen here? It is going to become three D ten. So, no electrons are. This electron is this side is not empty. I have only two electrons here. So, it should form what SP three. Whereas here, you see that now I have empty orbitals. Now I can go for DSP two. If it is DSP two, I know it is square planar. If it is sp three, I know it's tetrahedral. So you have to show everything, right? Uh, show the the hybridization. So show the both the hybridization and say that this is sp three, this is dsp two. That's why the shape is different. Okay, right. Next, which is what is a ligand? Give an example for uh, bidentate ligand. Ligand we know ligand is anything which has a lone pair and capable of donating it. Right, capable of donating it. To a metal or to okay in general to a metal, right? Bidentate ligand you can write EN that is nothing but NH two CH two CH two NH two. This is an example for a bidentate ligand, right? Okay. Explain as to how two complexes of this have different structures but do not differ in their magnitude. Yes. Yes. What is the issue? Okay. Yes. Right. Now we understood that these two are going to have different, you know, uh, shapes, different structures. One is uh, this is um, uh, DSP two, so it is going to be square planar, and this one is going to be what? This one is going to be tetrahedral, right? But do not differ in their magnetic behavior. Look at the previous one. None of them has unpaired electron. And this also has no unpaired electron. This also has no unpaired electron. Magnetic moment for both of them will be zero. Right, that is why you are now explaining again. Write the structure. I mean, write the electronic configuration. Everything. Make the hybridization. Show the shapes, and then show the number of what is that? Uh, unpaired electron is zero in both the cases, and that's why they have same magnetic behavior. Right. Next, what type of isomerism is shown by this one? And I know this kind of isomerism is what is called as your coordination isomerism. Right. And that means what? I'll be able to shift your NH three to here and CN to here. That or say CR from here to CO's place and CO's place to CR. That is what is called as a coordination isomerism, right? Why a solution of H2O six times this is in green color? Why the solution of NiCO is colorless? Now understand that for any colored compound, I need to have DD transition happening. Okay, I need to have DD transition happening. Now, if you check for NiH2O six times, it will hide is going to have unpaired electrons, and those unpaired electrons can be going to higher energy level. But here there are no unpaired electrons; all electrons paired, right? So there is no question of DD transition here. DD transition here is possible. That's why it's colored. That's why it is not. It is colorless. That's other one is colorless. This term DD transition should be there in your in your answer. If not, the marks will be cut. Okay, right. But what is the IUPAC name of the complex? That's very simple. Now again, this is CO three two minus, right? So X minus two is equal to minus one. X again is going to be in plus three. Cobalt is going to be in plus three, so it is going to be pentamine. Uh, this CO three to minus is carbonate, right? Carbonate to uh, cobalt three fluoride. Fluoride only, right? Very simple. Okay. Next. Uh, what is meant by crystal field splitting energy? Crystal field splitting energy is nothing but the energy difference between your T T D two G and E G, right? This is your T two G, and this is your E G. The energy difference between this is what is called as your crystal field splitting energy. See, when I say C F S E, this S is stabilizing energy. Okay, this you cannot write as C F S E here. You have to write the full name. Splitting energy is the difference between your uh, what to say the T two G and E G and C F S E. I gave you a formula. That formula is for CFS. That's a lot of difference, right? Okay. On the basis of crystal field theory, write the electronic configuration of D4 in terms of uh, T2G and EG in octahedral field when 
what is that delta delta naught is greater than p and delta naught is less than p now you understand that whichever is higher that won't happen in the sense that here the pairing energy is lesser that only will happen that means pairing will happen right in this case pairing energy is higher so pairing won't happen right that's all you have to understand now you have to go for d4 so we have t2g and eg now if i have a uh, delta not greater than p that means pairing will happen right so all the four electrons you can put in eg and no electrons in eg right and in case of uh, p greater than delta not pairing won't happen right because p is very high so in that case you will write t2 g3 eg1 that is the configuration very simple okay moving on Specify the oxidation number of the metal in the following form. In it is not as very easy. You can do this. So here it is X. Now this is neutral. X for this thing is minus one, and this is also neutral, equal to plus two. So here we'll get plus three for cobalt. Here P T X minus four equal to minus two is what I have. So X will get it as what? Uh, plus two. Okay. Here it is overall minus three charge, right? So X minus six equal to minus three. So will be equal to plus three here. And for this, now you understand that overall complex is zero. So x, now you understand that this is neutral. This one is going to have minus three is equal to zero. So x is equal to plus three. So this is also plus. Three. Okay. So plus three plus two plus three plus three. Um, plus three plus two plus three plus three. Will be the answer. Okay. Moving on. Discuss the nature of bonding in the following combination. When the balance of balance bond theory, that and all you can, you can easily do it. You might have done humpty number of times how to do it. Write the electronic configuration. See whether I have a strong field ligand or weak field ligand. Strong field ligand means pairing will happen. Weak field ligand pairing won't happen. And show the hybridization. I'll do for one thing maybe. Say I'll do for this one. And next the rest of the things you can do. Right now iron is going to have uh, scandium, iodine, titanium, chromium, manganese, iron three D six. Right iron is going to have three D six four S two. But now you see that it is going to have plus two oxygen state. So three D this is Fe two plus three D six is what I have. And four is zero, and four p zero is what I have, right? So six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And here is c n minus, so pairing will happen, right? So when the pairing happens, what is going to be there? One, two, three, four, five, six, and we have s orbital empty, p orbital empty, right? Now I can show the hybridization. Now you see that it is going to be d two. Sp three and if it is D two Sp three, I know it is octahedral in shape. It is a, a I don't know low spin complex. It's an inner orbital complex. It is diamagnetic. So many things you can say about this. Okay, right? Like this, you can do for other ones. Next, amongst the following, the most stable complexes. Now I can just blindly give the answer. The answer is going to be C two O four two minus C two. This one Fe C two O four thrice and three minus. The answer is very simple. It is because of chelation, right? Whenever chelating effect happens, that is going to give me a lot of stability. Okay, and other than this, none of them are actually multi. You know, more all are monodentate, but C two C two O four two minus at least is didentate. It will be able to go for ring formation. Chelation can happen, and that's where stability is. Right. Uh, what will be the correct order of wavelength of absorption in the visible region? Now that's very simple, Karna. So now all you can understand is energy is inversely proportional to uh, what is that uh, lambda, right? And energy is directly proportional to stability. Okay, right. So now whichever is going to have the highest stability is going to have the least amount of lambda, right? Now you see that uh, NO two and H two. Okay, and it's NO two minus is a strong ligand or weak ligand? Can you check your spectrochemical series and let me know? NO two comes after ammonia or before ammonia? Spectrochemical series. And you can also sir, this. Sir, in the proportionality, sir, uh, huh. lesser energy means more stability, no, sir. Oh so no, 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 no. We are not talking about the energy of the molecule. We are talking about how much energy is absorbing. Okay, okay, sir. Yes. Right. That is the difference here. Like it's energy absorbed. Okay, right. Now this is directly proportional to the strength of the ligand, right? And it is also directly proportional to the oxidation state of the metal. Mm -hmm. So plus two, plus three are there. Plus three will have more more uh, this thing. 
Sir, Anyways. the stability. Sir, here uh, energy given out should be, uh, if it's greater, then the stability will be greater, right? No, okay, now we are talking about correct order of energy. Wavelength of absor absorption we are talking. That is the amount of energy getting absorbed. Now, why do you think the energy will be getting absorbed? Say, I in case of crystal field theory, if I speak, T2G and EG are there. Say, if the electron is here, it will absorb the energy and go to the higher energy level. Right? And we know this difference in energy, that is between T2G and EG, this difference, delta naught, is directly proportional to strength of the ligand. Is it not a law? Uh, say, for example, C n minus will be able to create a large difference, whereas, say, C l minus will be able to get only small difference. So, which will absorb a lot larger energy. C n minus, if at all I have, will have absorb a larger energy because this electron has to go to higher energy level. And here it is a little easier. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Right? Okay. So, tell me, NO2 minus comes before NH3 or after NH3 in spectrochemical series. Check and tell me. I think it's a weakly kind only. It is weaker than H2O, I guess. Right. Anyways, so ammonia is the strongest. That goes to the first rank. And this is the second rank. And this is the third rank in order of energy. Right. This is an energy order. So exactly opposite will happen for wavelength. This will be first. This will be second. Okay. And this will be third. Okay. We're talking about lambda. That is inverse proportional to the energy. Hc by lambda. Is. Okay. Right. And we are done. Okay, any other question anybody has? Okay, fine. Thank you so much, people. We'll meet again on Sunday. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.